I'm starting out today with a little bit of grinding to get just a little bit of the profile grind, ground and all that stuff. And after that we will heat treat it. Yeah. very close to finish so only had to grind like 10 minutes to get the profile where I want it and now it's time for the heat treat and it's all pretty it explains itself really if you know how to heat treat heat treating 1080 steel and this Damascus isn't that big of a deal it's just basically heating it up to critical temperature and that's the point where it's non-magnetic and then quenching it in oil and I'm using canola oil and that basically works fine for me so normally I would start out with thermo cycling but I already did like maybe three two maybe two maybe even three cycles before the grinding so I'm not gonna bother about them too much I'm gonna do Maybe two cycles or maybe even three, whatever. And after that I'm gonna heat it up to the non-magnetic. And that's the point where it's like a dull red temperature. And then we're gonna quench it in the oil. oil. In the oil. fix it right after the quench and sometimes when they come out of the tempering oven they still have a little warp but that's not big of a deal it's always most of the time it's fixable sometimes not but if you're doing the turbo cycles you're basically playing it pretty safe so let's check it for hardness totally scaled the file so I just use a little bit of sandpaper to scrub off the oxide and I'm doing it right on the edge because I want the, the forge finish so I don't want to scratch it up right here and I will grind this away grind this away anyway this will form the bevel, so it's just for me to see the colors. So, and what I do before going in as well is 
I degrease it. I degrease the blade a little bit because I just quench it in oil and my oils, the oil on the blade can interfere with the tempering process because it can cause some some coloring. And I need to see the like the original colors of the steel so that I know if it's already tempered good enough or not. So just getting that off so I don't get any colors from the oil which tell me it's already blue or something and it's only yellow, you know, like that. So I'm gonna go in the tempering oven right now. It's still hot. What I do is I try to go as fast in the tempering oven as possible. Just don't wait too long. about time for me to grind in the shoulder area on the knife. I ground it up already to uh, 220 grit and after that I will take it up to Trisect A45 and I took a quick sneak peek at a pattern and it's... I worked on the trail as well and now it's time for the shoulders. <clears throat> but I want to tell you guys a little story right here. So. For grinding shoulders, there's something like a carbide file guide. And when you're on Instagram or on any social media platform, it looks like mostly the American scene is overhyping, like especially this brand of carbide file guides. And they're all telling, oh, it's such a great product, and oh, no, no, no. And I, already discussed this with like other makers and they all think the same about it as me I'm just gonna tell you right now I don't like them I don't like them at all and I will tell you why so they work fine if you're working like a you know like a stock removal guy and things are always like dead flat and all that stuff but sometimes when I need to squeeze this this might be just a little bit angled which means that when I'm screwing this on it'll tighten more on one side than the other which means that these will pop off and these are like the, 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 the carbide pieces these will just pop off because these are glued on and these are not connected with screws so 
I already had to re-glue them like not once, I had to re-glue them like several times already. And it's not that big of a deal to re-glue them, but you know, sometimes ju I just have to re-glue them for every knife again. I have to re-glue them to get like the shoulders right. And it looks like everybody is telling that it's a great product and nobody and everybody is just not telling the fact that they are glued on and that they can pop off sometimes. Maybe some guys don't don't have that problem, but I have that problem a lot, so I'm I'm just gonna tell you because if you're looking to get a file guide, oh man, I, it feels bad to do this to another maker, but uh, I hope you can improve on on this product, Bill, because I don't know, I just you as a maker, you just spend money on such a product and then it doesn't work like you want it to work, and this is just crappy. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna re-glue them now because I need them right now. And normally I would use like a very high quality metal glue, but now I'm gonna use some just CA glue because I really need them fast right now. So um, yeah. Oh yeah. I just forgot to say, ah, it feels so painful to say uh, the maker of this brand, but it's Bill Banky. Uh, yeah, I said it. Uh, if you want to get a, a carbide file guide from him, uh, just please consider what I just said. That's all. So I just wanted to add very quickly, I'm not hating on Bill Banky or something like that. I'm just telling this because some of you guys might are just beginners and are considering to get a file guide and then like spending like 100 euros 125 euros i think on a file guide like this that's a, that's that's a big investment for a, a for a beginner so that's why i'm telling this because please consider what you're buying and um yeah some products are there some guys are just hyping them but in the end I found it out like the hard way and the painful way, but um, therefore I'm telling you guys, you can make whatever decision you want. I'm not hating on Bill and Belky, Bill, Bill Banky. I'm just telling you the truth. And nobody is doing that, so I am doing that for you. I'm sorry. Cleaning off the glue with an old, with a, uh, how is it called, wire wheel thingy. Yeah, gluing on the file guide or the carbide piece. Right now. And oh yeah, it's not popping off because uh, I'm not aware and I'm overheating it and I'm overheating the glue. No, I'm just really aware and I'm really not overheating the glue and sometimes it just... Yeah. Re I tried everything and I'm almost sure I can say it's not m my problem that they are popping off. It's just a product.
きました。